We're going to talk today about how the gut, you can find information about the gut via urine. And we talk about stool testing a lot, but in some cases, the urine is actually a little bit better for investigating the gut, which is pretty interesting. So we'll dive into that. We're going to talk about energy markers and how your energy and fatigue levels can be tied in. Also, in the uh, mood category, we're going to get into possibly depression, anxiety, and how that could be tied in, or even OCD behavior, depression, winter depression. And then we're going to get into nutritional markers. And I mean, there's just so much information from one cup of pee. It's like magic. Yeah, we can get a lot. And again, when we're looking at gut issues, I always tell patients, we're always going to look at a gut test, like a good high quality gut test. You know, there's a couple of tests that we use, but one's the genetic test that looks at the gut microbiome infections, H. pylori, bacterial overgrowth, inflammation markers, digestion markers, immune markers. So we're always going to look at a comprehensive gut test to see what's going on. But it's nice to look at the organic acids because sometimes, most of the time, I would say they kind of correlate where if we see some kind of bacterial overgrowth or a fungal overgrowth, it, it will a lot of times say it on there. I do find the organic acids do pick up fungal overgrowth far more often than stool tests do. Uh, a lot of times, if you're looking at under the, the, the threshold level of fungal stuff, we do see a lot of fungal stuff. It's not at the positive level, but if we see it there at all, you know, we typically consider it a problem. And then third, you know, we may not see total congruence. Like there may say gut issues on an organic acid test, but not on a gut test. And guess what? If we just see it anywhere once, then that's enough for us to kind of move forward on it. We don't need total agreement. It's just an extra check. It's an extra net to catch anything that could be missing. And of course, we get deeper uh, look in what's happening nutritionally, methylation, B vitamins, uh, sulfur metabolism, detoxification, mitochondrial functions. We really get a good window at what's happening up underneath the hood. Yeah, I want to show you this three-year-old. If you'll let me share my screen, I tried to click on it. It says you got to enable it for me. But I've got a three-year-old little girl as a client who has been to conventional doctors and she can't get help. And the pediatrician, of course, is just saying, Hey, you know, possibly do some vitamin D and that's really it. Okay. Now I can share. So let me pull this up here. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Okay, good. So the people watching too, if you're listening via audio, I encourage you to check out Dr. Justin's Justin Health YouTube channel. If you're listening and you want to see the visual here, we're going to try to make sure that those doing audio only still get the gist of it. But really what we're trying to find here are high markers. That's when you really see problems. And you can see for this little girl, this is, keep in mind, this is a three-year-old little girl. And the parent said that the girl is literally addicted to sugar and she refuses to eat anything else. And she has a ton of symptoms, skin, mood, gut, behavior, just all kinds of stuff. And look at this tartaric acid which is an indication of aspergillus growing in her gut. We want less than 3.9. She's 147. I think this is the highest I've ever seen. And sadly, it's in a child. And then, of course, arabidose. You and I have talked about that being the gas that candida produces. We want less than 56. She's off the charts at 226. So right That's there. really high. 